insignificance is a pretty sort of delusion. Imagine, of all the people in the world, that you would be the only one that doesn't matter. How preposterous. Narcissistic, even. You mean so much, because you are. I don't know your name, and I don't need to. Welcome back to Spirit Box Radio. Hello, faithful listeners. Welcome back to Spirit Box Radio. The forums have been alive with enthusiasm and discussion this past week, and I'm incredibly grateful, as always, for the amazing outpouring of support I've received in light of everything that's happened here at the studio and in my life in general. Whilst I'm not sure if it would be right to dive in and try a group seance again just yet, given the... um... explosive nature of what happened last time with the, uh... you know... me? Well... Anyway, I've decided to ask friend of the show Rotidia Adelphus, the Bog Witch, as they have a better grasp on the particulars of seances, and if anything, with my, um, self, uh, if something goes awry, then Rotidia will... You know will... I have no idea what you expect me to do if you go all boiled bog water again. Boiled? <sighs> Never mind. You know what you're doing, though, right? So that should make things a little better. I know the specifics. But I don't know how much help that'll be in your case. Yeah, thanks, right, idiot. That's super comforting. Thanks. Uh, so, um, what exactly are we going to do? Let's see. Well, usually my first point of call would be to choose a place that has some kind of a spiritual meaning to you. But as every home you've ever lived in has either collapsed into dust or apparently burnt into a husk, your mother has never let you out and you don't remember anything anyway... This is as close as we're going to get. Ouch. I, I'm just saying it like it is. You have in mind who you want to contact, don't you? Yes. I'm not sure how I feel about that tone of voice, Samael. Sorry, yeah. I, I know what I'm trying to reach. Concerns me that you say what rather than who. What else do we need? Samael. Leave it alone, right, idiot. F- fine, fine. Mm. Could you not do that? What? Whatever it was you just did. What did I do? You, uh, compelled me or something. I was gonna keep pushing you, but now, for some reason, that feels like the worst idea in the world. Sorry, it keeps happening. Uh, But please, just leave it alone. What else can I do? Leave? I'd really rather you didn't. I can't. Not in good conscience. You're... Marie's boy, after all. I promised I'd keep an eye on all three of you if anything ever happened to her. And I can spare an eye, I think. Thank you. I will reiterate that I don't know what you expect me to do if your power gets out of hand. I'm used to leading a seance with witches with less skill in the arcane than I have. And whilst I can't exactly call what you can do, a uh, skill, it's certainly powerful. Uh, thanks? It's not a compliment. Great. So, we're here. I know what I'm trying to reach. Now what? All right. Turn out the big light. After I've lit the candles, Samael. Sorry. Sorry. Now should I... Yes, yes, turn it out. Hold out your hand. What? Ew! What is that? Lemongrass oil. Smell it? Mm, yeah. It's nice, but it's... Kind of sticky. Right. Cosmopolitan cretin. Take a deep breath. It's cold. It's a silver pendulum. Hold it by the end, out like this. Good, good. Can you feel that? Yes. I can feel it. Okay, good. Very good. Now, close your eyes. Okay. Excellent. And now... Arcana Minor, heed my call. As heir apparent to the Blood Rose Crown, you are bound to What are you here. doing? I call upon the thing called Scourge to come forth and hold commune. Scourge, I speak, and you will hear me. Come forth and speak. Come back 
here. Right, idiot. What are you doing? Leaving. No, what? We need to try again. I... Goodbye, Samaya. Right, idiot, just hold on. I am. To my bag. Goodbye. Ugh. God damn it. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. I know I haven't said what I was thinking about this whole thing before, but I promised myself as soon as the show was live again, I'd try to find out more about Scourge, and I just, yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Maybe our last séance, the one we did right before. Before I ended up in the impossible house, it went pretty catastrophically, but it's the best one I've ever attempted, and I think that's because it was live on air. And I couldn't risk Rytidia knowing what I was planning to do, because I think she'd have said no. That's bad, isn't it? But I just... I want to know. I want to understand. And I just don't, and it's eating me up. What is he? He's not a major arcana, I'm pretty sure of that. He's something else. Anyway. Um. Oh, I know. I found an augury forecast for this week. I didn't think I'd have time to read it, assuming foolishly as I did that Rytidia and I would be a little more successful in the seance department. Ha. <laughs> seance department. I wonder if Madame Marie's grandmother's shop had a seance department. I bet it was amazing. I bet there were so many books. And they'd probably have loads of answers in them. More than these ridiculous journals or log books or whatever they are. A lot of them just have lists and lists of dates and names, some of which have been crossed out. A lot of them are from way before Madame Marie was born, the dates. Some of them are from before her grandmother was born, probably, though I don't actually know when that was. Or what happened to her parents. Or, well, much about Madame Marie at all, really. Let's not dwell on it. I bet Oliver would remember the shop. I should ask him. Wait. He said he needed to catch up on sleep. And I'm not going to get in the way of him taking care of himself. The whole time I've known him, I've only seen him drink water twice. Yes, I know I'm being a little hypocritical here, but whatever. Uh, stop it. Don't look at me like that. I get enough of that from Anna. Half the time my conscience has her voice. No wonder, really, with the amount that she rags on at me about stuff. Right. So, augury forecast. There was a funny smell coming from under Kitty's sink. I decided to have a look at it, even though there's pretty much nothing I'd be able to do. Sticking out of one of the joints in the pipes, there was a little scrap of paper. I pulled it out, and the smell vanished immediately. It was smaller than a post-it note, and the writing on it was extremely tiny. Here's what it said. A murder of crows was spotted flying in circles over the A55. Traffic will be horrendous this week. The birds nest low. A storm is drawing near. Its calmest point is at the centre. We call it an eye, but it sees nothing. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, but a cat on the lap is worth a fortune. Orchids do not make you forget. The sparrows trill in fear as Freya opens the door to scatter crumbs from their toaster. Be sure to close your windows at night before you go to sleep, or you risk inviting in more than a breeze. Under the gaze of doves, lovers dream in tandem, but their dreams may not be pretty. There are many benefits to being an arcanist. The swallow has turned out its nest. The 1810 service to London Euston is expected to be busy and passengers with flexible tickets may wish to use an alternative service for a more comfortable journey. So concludes the augury forecast. It's the first one I've found since I started staying in Kitty's shed. I've scoured the place for more, but nothing has turned up yet. 
I thought about going into the shell of the house to search for more, but I only got as far as the kitchen. Egg Roll and Cosmo came with me, leaving little paw prints in the soot on the ground. It's amazing, really. There was no fire. And it's rained so much since everything happened that you'd think everything inside would be sopping. But it's like a desert from a nightmare. The soot like black sand. Something gleamed and caught my eye, but when I looked closer, it was the kitchen tap poking out of the ash. It was so... still. There was nothing left. The boxes of tea from the kitchen window, the old tablecloth decorated with constellations and faded gold thread. All of it. Gone. All day, I can see it there at the top of the garden, its windowless frames gaping down like empty eye sockets, seeing nothing. I dreamed that it was full of plants the other day, ivy winding around the banister, green shoots bursting through the floorboards of my old bedroom, moss thick on the old chintz chair at the broadcasting desk, the microphone tree turned into a sapling with pale green buds at the end of each friendly spindly branch. But, no. For now, at least, the house is this massive, dead thing. Right there, whenever I look out of the window. Sorry for being so maudlin, faithful listeners. I'm really disappointed about the seance, you know? I was hoping to get some answers. For me and for you. Since I've been back on the air, the forums have been alive with speculation and theories about what happened in the Impossible House, and a lot of what many of you have been pointing out has been pretty interesting, if a little odd. It seems that the broadcast you heard on Spirit Box Radio of what happened in the house was entirely tied to my perspective of what happened, that it started at the usual time of witching hour on Thursday morning, and ran for about as long as I thought we were in the house. I now know that in real time it was a week, and it seems like of everyone I've managed to speak to about what happened inside the house, Oliver's experience was as close to a week of time passing as anyone's, and even that only seemed to last three or four days. But because he died a few times in the interim, he can't pin it down to a specific time frame. What he did say was that it was extremely odd, as he'd escaped from the inconvenience since for a few moments and they'd find him again minutes later, complaining he'd been gone for hours. That was when he noticed the clocks, apparently. We were all moving incredibly slowly and sometimes stopped entirely. Whenever I saw a clock, it said it was three minutes past three, even when I walked into the blood-soaked living room to find Madame Marie holding a baby. Well, me as a baby. And her scourge was there. It's funny, because nobody could agree on whether there was a sound before scourge appeared. There was a rumbling storm, and the rain and the thunder drowned out almost everything. And then Scourge turned to look at me, and I don't know. He was there, standing there, barefoot in the blood. His feet were filthy with some kind of black dirt, and the bottoms of his pale trousers were soaked in it too, but there was not a speck on the white coat that they were wearing, save for a small red dot on the lapel. And his teeth, his teeth lined in red black as he grinned an awful smile. Last time I saw them it was so brief, so dark in the basement studio I didn't get a chance to really look, but his eyes were not really eyes, not like I know them. Just two black orbs, red crusted at the corners. When they looked at me the air was like static. I could feel it on my skin, hear it trembling in my blood. It was visceral, vivid. I could taste blood on my tongue. And Madame Marie froze the moment he looked at me. I don't mean she paused. I mean she just stopped. The rain kept pouring. The thunder kept rolling. The house was connected to me, Oliver said, but that room, that scene, Madame Marie scourged the baby. Even though it happened in the house, I can't remember the impossible house was the twisted mirror of. It didn't feel like that was mine. I... I don't know how to explain it. The rain was mine. The storm. That was mine. But the rest of it... 
it didn't feel like it belonged to me at all. Because it was baby me she was holding. Scourge named me right there, and everything else was exactly as Anna described. More blood than there should have been. The hammering rain. It was something else. Something different. That room. And Scourge, I'm certain, is at the heart of it somehow. And on the forums, it seems like you all agree. Oh crap! Rytidia's pendulum! Oh, that looks okay to me. I'll give this back when... I will give it back. Sometime, anyway. Minor, heed my call, as heir apparent to the blood rose crown you are bound to hear me. I call upon... Nobody. Egg roll? That is a lit candle. Because there's... there's wax everywhere. I, Faithful listeners, I think that's about all we have time for this week on Spirit Box Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in. I bid you a restful night. Box Radio is a podcast created by Pippin Aero Major, distributed by Hanging Source Studios under a Creative Commons non-commercial share-alike 4.0 international license. This episode starred Pippin Aero Major as Sam, Ellie Ripley as Rytidia, and an assortment of cats as Revel and Eggroll. Find more info at hangingsourcestudios.com and consider supporting the show on patreon.com forward slash hangingsourcestudios for early access to new episodes and shiny bonus content. Spirit Box Radio is recorded in front of a dead studio audience. Get spooky. Hello, faithful listeners. It's me, creator of the show Pippin Aero Major, to tell you about another fantastic audio drama, Hello from the Hallow Woods. This incredibly intricately woven tale moves easily between multiple storylines and characters, and though at first they may seem unrelated, they influence and shape each other in surprising and innovative ways. The tale is told by the marvellous and sinister Nikignik, voiced by the show's incredible creator, William A. Wellman. The show has fabulously realised characters and beautiful storytelling, which as well as being suspenseful and rich in horror, is deeply engaged with themes of queer love and identity, realised by a host of characters from a huge breadth of queer identities. You can learn more about this amazing show at hellofromthehallowwoods.com and you can listen wherever you find your podcasts, including where you're listening right now, by searching Hello From The Hallow Woods.